What's up everyone, Sean Kyle Blackerth here today with a documentary review. This is my first uh, attempt at a documentary review of any sort. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you do, there will be a link in the description for you to uh, check out a channel that me and my guitarist will be posting videos on. Uh, well, he'll be posting them, but I will be in some of them. Uh, he, we are creating horror movies and actually are going to be reviewing horror movies and doing discussions and stuff like that on his channel, Dark House Images. Link will be in the description. Go check it out. Subscribe. There's a bunch of really cool stuff in the works, and uh, go support it. Um, this is a film by Lucifer Valentine called Black Metal Veins. And as you guys know, they're subscribed to me. Black metal is my favorite genre of music. Um, I absolutely love it. So, Right off the bat, the title appealed to me. Second of all, I am very fascinated by addiction, more specifically, uh, drug addiction and um, heroin uh, in particular is one that I'm very fond of watching documentaries about, and I've actually written about in uh, songs. So right off the bat, I felt like this is something I would enjoy. and. I gotta say, I'm very satisfied with it. Um, where to begin with this, guys? Uh, let me give you a warning if you do want to watch this. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not a movie that you can just watch. There's some very powerful images in this, consisting of drug use, sex, rape, um, a possible death, um, and even what they made out to look like an abortion of some sort. Um, that's at least what I took away from that scene. And I will talk more about that at the end of this video where I will say that there will be spoilers. So I will wrap up my thoughts on it overall. And then I will give the spoilers, so to speak, um, at the end of the video. So you guys don't um, get the movie ruined if you want to see it. Uh, as I said, very powerful images, and this movie really shows um, the decline of people as they use drugs and what they kind of turn into or what they, or how it enhances what they've already turned into. Um, the characters that you meet at the beginning, and it kind of stays the same throughout, minus a few dying, um, are Raven, Brad, and Doom are the three main ones that they keep coming back to. And there's parts of this where I question the legitimacy of it, and I will talk about that more, that more in depth uh, when I get to the spoilers section. And uh, But it does feel like a genuine documentary overall. The filming of it, the cinematography is very good I enjoy it I enjoy the filters that they use and the very choppy editing um it kind of shows you like when they're talking and telling these stories that they're just kind of rambling and he kind of cuts to certain points in it and it kind of shows certain things that the characters say a lot or these people say a lot and uh, I think it's a very interesting idea and I like it a lot um Another thing about this that I really enjoyed was how they kind of showed them that as these people that were very hateful for the most part, except for Raven, um, she was shown to be actually very intelligent, but made some very stupid decisions, obviously, because she's a drug addict. Um, that's not a good thing at all. Um, not very bright to begin with, but they show her as a very bright individual in the aspect of of she tells you how she knows the effects of these drugs as she takes them she talks about how it affects the body and why you feel certain things when you do and that can either come across as very disingenuine almost like it was a forced sort of thing like she's acting or she's actually very smart just doesn't care and she's kind of made out to be the later and in my opinion, at points, it feels like it is the first one. Um, 
So you have her, and the other ones, they're kind of just these very hateful people that have nothing left. And they would never really had bad childhoods, none of them. They even say that, that they just chose this path, they kind of chose this lifestyle. It wasn't something that they did to escape from anything. They're just hateful people that took drugs. Uh, one of the characters, Doom, he actually says that anything that can kind of further mankind to its own demise is a good thing, such as rape, murder, and hard drug use. So, I guess that kind of shows why his philosophy on to why he does drugs is to kind of further mankind. Uh, Doom doesn't want to hold on to any material possessions. He talks about that and how he gave up his black metal collection. And they has nothing to prove to anyone. Um, it's a very interesting sort of uh, concept, which is something I really liked. Um, Brad, on the other hand, he's just kind of a hateful guy that's very stupid and strung out all the time. Um, he's definitely not a good person, definitely not a person I think anyone would ever want to associate with. Um, but overall, he does have a human side to him, as his mother kind of shows. Um, if you can get past the powerful images, um, you will probably enjoy this. Uh, there's not a lot of black metal to be found in it, and that's something I really want to stress, is the black metal kind of comes into these people's mindsets, not really about the music. They talk about the music every once in a while, and they show these uh, people that are involved in this documentary uh, playing black metal. But there's not a lot of it in there. I saw a shirt that was the Zaster and Nachmistium split, a Profanica shirt, and a Vlad Tepes one. That's really about it. Um, I believe there's a Misfits one as well, but that's not black metal. And they talk about it a little bit as to what it is and what it means to them. And other than that, it doesn't really play a role in this movie. So if you're expecting like a black metal drug sort of documentary, it's nothing like that. But if you're looking for one that's a very good watch, that's very interesting, and is kind of outlandish at times, featuring people... Uh, smoking crack, shooting up heroin, and even uh, at one point shooting up whiskey into their neck. Um, this is definitely something for you. If you want to watch something that will shock you, or maybe maybe it will shock you, I don't know. It, at points I was kind of sitting there like, what? <laughs> but um, overall it's definitely a good watch and I would highly recommend it. It's uh. It's a 7.5 out of 10. If you got the stomach for it, definitely watch it and support Lucifer Valentine if you enjoy it. Or even if you want to just support him in general and buy the DVD, which I'm definitely gonna. Um, I recommend it to you guys. As for the spoilers and stuff, here's the point. So if you want to exit the video now, go for it. And the spoilers are this. Uh, one of the characters, Chris, he is gunned down within six months of the shooting of this documentary. He um, was shot eight times total. Uh, they said four in the head and four in the chest. Uh, didn't really say what the whole ordeal was, more than likely a drug deal, considering he was the one that went out and got these people their drugs for the beginning part of this documentary. Um, if that's the case, that is very sad. Uh, but there's parts of this that I feel like are completely fake. And I'm going to talk about that right now. <clears throat> uh, the character Raven. I'm going to say character. Um, she's very believable. But as I said, her intelligence is completely amazing. She's not very stupid. She makes stupid... Uh, she's... Excuse me. She's not very bright, but she's intelligent, if that makes sense. She makes stupid decisions, but she knows that they're stupid, and she knows why this happens, and that happens, and the other thing, and all this stuff. She seems to be very intelligent, but she does these stupid things. I feel like that's kind of a forced sort of thing. 
Um, another thing about this that doesn't feel believable is Raven's boyfriend. He is the biggest pushover I've ever seen in my life if he really does exist. And man, if you exist, you're a retard. Um, he kind of sits back and allows her to shoot up heroin. He kind of allows her to destroy herself. He says he doesn't, he won't buy her drugs and he will pay for the hospital visits. But he claims he didn't really understand the effects of crack. Really? We live in the United States of America. We teach kids in school about the dangers of crack. And you're going to sit there and tell me that you didn't know so you let her smoke crack when you met her? I don't buy that. Another thing about him that doesn't seem very believable is how he hangs around these people yet he has completely complete opposite views um he's just a total pushover and kind of a douche to me um you want to feel bad for him but he's too stupid to feel bad for so to me didn't really like that and the part that the couple parts that really uh threw me off um, there's this one character, I'm gonna say character, I keep saying that, um, she is a prostitute, or has Brad called a gutter cunt, which is an amazing thing I want to use for a band name eventually, <laughs> um, she claims that she's, uh, pregnant, and the very next scene, it appears that he shoot. Brad shoots her stomach area, her uh, womb area, with what appeared to be either whiskey or heroin. Um, the syringe kind of looked like the whiskey color. He shot directly in, right after she said that. Um, then she started to, uh, she passed out, and then Brad proceeded to strip her naked, and looked like what appeared to be rape her. Um... But throughout the whole film, he's fingering her and all this other stuff. And it shows it. Um, but then the other part that felt completely unbelievable is Brad talks about the suicide of his ex, Angie. And I have no issue with the story. Uh, she shot up three capsules of heroin and overdosed and killed herself and her unborn child. Well, immediately after he says that she shot up three capsules of it, Raven um, shoots up three capsules, and her body goes completely limp. Uh, her boyfriend comes, picks her up, takes her to the bed, and him and Brad check her body and like pick up her arm and see if she's limp. And then they proceed to strip her naked and leave her on the bed. The camera cuts out and then it comes back and there's blood all over the comforter. And then they say in an interview of like what happened to Raven, they say she's dead. That seemed incredibly fake. Incredibly fake. And I don't know how to feel about that. If that's true, that's incredibly sad. But to me, that scene felt extremely extremely fake and if anybody knows anything about this and can clear up the whole situation for me please let me know I'll leave it in the comments but um yeah that's my review of this guys I uh, hope you guys liked it this is my first attempt at it uh, probably wasn't as good as I hoped it would be but um regardless uh, that's it for this video um as I said it's about 7.5 out of 10 definitely check it out if you're interested and you can handle the extreme imagery um, but it's definitely a very interesting uh, watch. So give it a shot. Uh, that's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. And as always, keep it metal.